Okay, this is how to change the battery on a Seiko 7C46 or 7C43 movement and this nice tuner, as you can see, the battery's dead, the second hand has stopped moving, so we're going to change the battery. And to do that we want to take the back off and I have this case opener here. The end points here are super sharp and I'm guilty of scratching one or two case backs in the past, unfortunately. So now this is how I do it um, to reduce the risk of that. I've got an old Ziploc bit of plastic here, cut off, put that on first, and then very, very carefully, I try and line this up with the holes. So I carefully fit it in one hole and then aim for the hole on the other side and then tighten it a bit until it won't go anymore. Okay. And this is what I found is important, is pressing down while you unscrew. Uh, if you don't press down, then you risk slipping and even the tiniest slip is gonna scratch that case back. So pressing down and trying to unscrew. I'd actually unscrewed this the other day, so it's still uh, relatively loose. Um, if it's too tough to budge, then don't try and force it too much. Put it in a case holder if you can and that makes it much easier. Okay, so I'm not gonna take it completely off, but until I know I'm absolutely safe and it's definitely gonna come off by hand. This is where I've made mistakes in the past by being careless and just pulling the opener off without thinking at an angle and accidentally scratch the back. So once I know that it's loose, I'll then lift it up vertically. Maybe just unscrew it a tiny bit, I loosen it a tiny bit. Up, okay, and I know I'm safe. Oh. I always get very nervous with that bit. Right, and then we should be able to undo it by hand. There we go. Okay, and we can see the inside of this as well. All looks nice. And from this part, I'm actually going to put little finger cots on. Finger cots are these tiny little like gloves just for your fingers. Or you can use surgical gloves. If you really don't have access to finger cots or gloves, you could use a piece of plastic like the Ziploc plastic before when you're pressing down on the battery, for example. But I'd really try and avoid getting your fingers directly on the movement because the grease and the oils are going to tarnish and discolor that metal over time. Right, the finger cots are on. I've just got them for the fingers. I'm going to touch the movement with. You don't need to put them on all of your fingers. And the first thing to do is to get a screwdriver to unscrew that screw that's holding on the battery cover. This is where you need a fine screwdriver. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy the most expensive. Uh, this is a sort of entry level set from MKS, a good Japanese brand. And they've lasted me several years, they're very good. But you will need something better than even the glasses uh, screwdrivers that you can get from the supermarket. They still won't be fine enough for doing watch work. Um, just like with the case opener, there is a risk of scratching because these are also quite sharp. So I'm trying to make sure I'm dead straight on the screw. And again, I try and lift vertically if I can to avoid <coughs> scraping the movement. Right, as well as fine screwdrivers, you also need fine tweezers. Okay. And now we can pull off this. It's attached with a small, well, it's sort of pressed into a small sort of dimple thing there. So we just need to sort of gently lift that off. It's held on with friction, so it will come off. Just need to be careful. And these tweezers are also sharp and will scratch the movement. So again, I've got to be very careful. Come on. Well, there we go. Right, for handling the battery, even though this is a dead battery and it doesn't matter, I still like to use plastic tweezers um, for any kind of batteries. This movement needs the SR43SW and it needs silver oxide, not alkaline, which will run down faster and may leak if they're not from a brand that you trust. So make sure you get a good quality brand, silver oxide, 
don't try and save one or two dollars on a cheap brand that is worth less than one percent of the value of your watch and yet it could ruin it okay this is where i'm glad i've got the finger cocked because i'm going to press down on that as i line it up okay that little dimple is in the hole there and now I'm going to try and get the screw okay just sort of rest it in gently and again moving vertically I'm going to make sure I oh yes got it Tighten that carefully, pushing down gently, but really trying not to slip off that screw head. Okay, that's good. There we go, that's on tightly. Okay, we can double check that it's working. There we go. So all that remains is to put the case back, back on but this one actually has the old gasket on which is sort of flattened and stretched and gone a bit hard and so I've got a new one prepared here which I've already put some silicon grease on um, now I've got silicon grease on these tweezers so I will clean them before I use them again This is a 29.8 millimeter gasket for this watch. And it's actually used quite a lot by Seiko for their other watches, other, other divers which use 29.8 millimeter gaskets. So it's worth getting a few because if you've got a little collection, you'll probably use them in other ones as well. Okay. Good, good, good. That's gone on nicely. And so I'm going to do the same thing in reverse. Be super careful and tighten this. Okay, so I'm tightening that. I'm pressing down and I'm gradually much easier to tighten, but just because it's easier doesn't mean you can hurry and make mistakes. Okay, that's on as hard as I can go. Lift off vertically. And we're good to go. Phew, breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> How to change the battery on a Seiko 7C46 or 7C43 movement.